Hi everyone, it's Lillian here and welcome to Monday Night Crafting. I'm so glad you joined me. Um, I live in Spruce Grove, Alberta, Canada and I'm wondering where you live. So um, I came across a, a technique that was new to me this week and I'm going to be sharing it with you tonight. I have a few things I want to share with you first before I do that. But this technique um, was shared with me by one of my downline and that's what I love about being on a team is that we get to share back and forth and have fun ideas going back and forth. But just before I share this new technique with you, I have a question for you. What is at the very top of your wish list right now from Stampin' Up? If you could leave a comment in the comment section, um, then we will get down to the desk and see what's coming up here. So I'm just putting you down and you're saying, well, this doesn't look like a technique. It looks like a basket full of goodies. And you would be right. I'm taking just a little side trip here, putting that up a little higher so you can see it. And then making sure that we are live. Here we go. Um, what I have in this goodie is I was thinking about the, the amazing starter kit deal, which is an amazing deal anytime. Um, but it is even more amazing right now. So I gave myself a little challenge, but just before I do that, I just want to see who's here. Sheila's here. Carolyn, hello, hello. Welcome. So my challenge was, anytime you buy a starter kit from Stamping Up, you get $165 worth of product for $135. So, and no shipping and handling and no GST. So I thought, I wonder how close I can get to 165 just putting together product. So I put this basket together a few days ago and I have a confession to make. I've been looking all over for these things here and here they were in this basket. So now I know where they are anyway. So this is what I put in my basket and then I'm going to tell you what the total is and then I just have a little suggestion. Why don't you see how close you can get to $165 in Stamping Up products without going over and um, just see what it looks like. Okay, in my basket, I, I'll just start at the top. I have the blending brushes. These are amazing. They are one of my very favorite things right now. Um, so we have the blending brushes. We have the opal rounds. These are wonderful little gems that sparkle and yet they're clear so they look great on absolutely anything. I put in a package of envelopes because I always need envelopes and I needed that much money to get to where I was going. And then, as many of you know, I've been hooked on the uh, s uh, sand and seashell suite in the mini catalog. So I put in the bundle, so the dies and the stamps. I did that. Then, of course, I had to have the embossing folder. So I put that in here. Then I put in, and now this is a partially used package, but uh, the Sand and Sea Designer paper. And then I thought, well, what's one color of cardstock that goes with that? And that is Flirty Flamingo. And all of this in here, I could get for $135, and it would actually come to $160.75 if I was buying it just as a customer. And then I would have G shipping and handling and GST, so it would be $185.67, and I would get all of this for $135. But I would also, during celebration, get, let me see if I can pick these all up, because I've got them in pieces, these five packages of six by six designer paper. So we have the regals, the brights, um, the subtles, the neutrals, and the in colors from that began this year. So the 19, the 2020 to 2022 in colors. I think I've got that right. This alone is worth $78.75 without shipping and handling and GST. And they're going to be available in the next catalog. So it's, it's a sneak peek as well. So all of this is an excellent deal. And some of you I know have taken advantage of it. It's totally up to you, but I just wanted you to be aware visually what a good deal that is. And now I know where my embossing folder is. All right, let's put that to the side. 
And I know I'm up a little higher tonight. That's because I'm going to be using the stamp and cut and emboss machine. But just before I do, time is running out if you are wanting to take part in staycation. Staycation is um, just amazing and it's happening this Saturday and registration ends um it ends i think the 20 no ends the 28th at noon so uh, make sure that you've checked that out if you want some more information contact me or i can uh, i'll be posting more information about it uh, this 47 dollars covers six different teaching sessions it covers three tip videos and all kinds of other fun things as well. What's more is you just do it at home in your own time, whenever it works for you. It goes live on Saturday, but you can do it whenever. That's the one of the joys of online. We can't get together, but we can definitely make it fit our schedule. And we will show you how to use your own materials to make the things. So that's just something to be aware of that that's coming to a close. All right. I'm seeing so many more of you on there. Hi, Diana. Hi, Marion. Oh, Fran. Good for you. Excellent. So I want to bring in the stamp and cut and emboss machine. Now I know Sheila is is just dying for the mini. I have the mini here to unpack, but I needed the big one for tonight. So let me just see. Let's there we go. So this is called the double dry embossing technique. And you say, what in the world is that? Well, maybe you don't say that. Maybe you already know, but I didn't know. Oh, I just dropped them all on the floor. So I will stop and pick them up. So the double dry embossing machine means that you would take one embossing folder that has, would be backgroundish, pardon me, backgroundish, and then one that has a design, and you're going to end up doing both on one piece of paper. So on this one here, well, let me just bring in a piece of paper and show you what I mean. So I'm bringing in a piece of basic white, and we've got that there, and I'm going to start with the where is it? I'm going to start with the Tasteful Textile 3D. So this is a 3D one. I'm going to line it up in here. And I love that they have these lines so I can get things straight. Some don't, it doesn't matter, but sometimes it does. So there we go. Get that straight. Now because it's a 3D one and it's a new 3D one, uh, I have some old ones, so it's a little bit different, but we're going to put this on top. You might have a blue one or a gray one, but so it's just number one, the platform, and number four. So we're going to run that through. And we could go backwards, but I've got so many different stands over here that it makes it a little awkward. And when you open it up, it has this wonderful soft background texture to it. I don't know if you can see it or not. You might even be able to see the embossing folder better, but it is it is gorgeous. So then I'm going to put that to the side, and now I'm going to bring in the Evergreen Forest embossing folder. This is that gorgeous embossing folder that came out in the Holiday Mini. So let's put this in there, and I'm going to line it up here. Now I am going to pay attention to where the tops of the trees are. I don't want them going off the top. So let's slide that up a little bit, get it straight so our trees aren't bent, going a funny direction. And again, this is a 3D one, so I'm going to use this, number four, and run it through. And now I have embossed that piece of cardstock twice, and it works. What happens is the first one gets a little bit flattened, but it's not bad, and then it has the extra texture. And I don't know if you can see very well in this one, but it is really effective up close and personal, and you'll be able to see a little bit better um, in some of the others I'm going to show, show you. And then we're gonna make a card with this one. So just hang in there with me. I think I can take this away now. 
because I'm just going to show you some of the combinations which I had all organized but then I dropped it so um, so this this one here has the woodland and I did the texture in the background so again it just added some really neat um, effect back in there um, this one here I did with the brick and mortar first so the brick and mortar so it looks like a brick wall and then I took this one and those of you with mini machines this one will fit in the mini machine and I just did it sort of like that and so now we have the bricks and the vines and doesn't that look neat I just love that and I'm going to keep that for a minute I want to use that for something else so we'll get rid of these before I drop them again and then um, we have this one here and what I did is I did the painted texture in the background so this is kind of crinkly and then I did the scripty on top I've ju I'll just warn you it's really tempting to just keep trying all different combinations and so we've got this subtle background there and then the script on top and it looks pretty amazing if I do say so myself then I thought well what could I do the magnolia on so I looked and I thought well I think it's a bit busy but I'm going to give it a try that's what it's all about right is giving it a try and seeing what works and so I ran it through the ornate floral first and then the magnolia and it's right now not my favorite but I think it has potential so I'm going to have to try uh, something else there oh I'm seeing lots of you liking the, the this technique I'm so glad give me a thumbs up if you like it and then I have one more to show you so the last one that I did I did the pinewood planks so it looks like a barn wall kind of thing and then over top I did the dandelions and this is how it turned out it's like this and then I took my um, blending brushes and just lightly added color to the dandelions there and I am really really happy with how that that turned out what do you think about that folks and then the words Oh, I, I have to tell you, I am loving the many messages. I know I've talked a bit about it before, but the many messages are, is this big stamp set full of messages, and then there's this big die, and you cut them all out. But I can be finishing up a card and then go, hmm, I think I want this one, and then just, I have it ready to go on a card. It's just so handy to have. And then these pastel pearls, don't they just finish it off? So I am really pleased with how that turned out. So now I'm going to move all of these goodies to the side, and let's make a quick card. Oh, I was going to show you this. So let me just bring my this back in. And, um, sorry, it's all going to fall again. And I'm going to bring in my blending brush and just show you how this works. I'm trying to think, I think I will just use crumb cake. This is crumb cake here, and I'm going to use crumb cake ink. I haven't done this particular one yet. So I'm going to take my blending brush and just tap it lightly and then tap it off. And then just lightly run it over. And at first, it doesn't look like much is happening. Here, let me just see. And But I'm really catching the, um, the raised part. And it's going to start to look like magic pretty soon here. So I'm going to start off and come back on. I'm not pressing hard. I don't want to press hard. You... That's what gives you the control, is to just gradually add it. Oh, now it's starting to come. The magic's starting to happen. I didn't stamp, tap it off quite enough there. And you can start to see how that effect, doesn't that even just add even more to it? And then I could go down here and do some more. So 
um, just a fun technique with that. So now how do I clean the brush again? I just brush it back and forth until it's not leaving any marks and then I put it back in my holder, do up my ink, and now we're ready to do the rest of our card. Let me just see, there we go. So the card we're going to make, I think I'll show it to you first. It is going to look like this. Such, such an elegant, simple card. But if you could see it up close, this is textured in the background. If you had the snowflake one, the snowflakes look gorgeous in the background here. And then we've got this. We could have inked some of the trees up, but I chose to stick just with silver and white. It would make all different kinds of wonderful cards. But we're going to make this particular card here. So here's our piece that is ready. And we're going to actually just stick it right down to another piece that is just a little bit bigger. It's just a quarter of an inch bigger. And it's just going to add a little more definition. And I'm going to use the multi-purpose liquid glue because it gets down in the cracks. Plus it's very forgiving and I don't always get things on straight right away. And it will let me wiggle it around. Now I'm going to bring in my um, silicone mat because working white on white here. I need a little bit more definition. And there we go. Now, and a little more glue on my fingers. All right, let's see. Have I got it straight? We were just talking today, Marilyn and Joanne and I were in a, a meeting about uh, sometimes we look for perfection where you know, it's good enough sometimes. And I think that's good enough as far as straight goes. So that looks pretty good. I'm even going to turn it over and give it an extra burnish. That way, if I've got stuff on my fingers, it's not getting on my card. There, that looks like that. Now I'm going to bring in a bit of this silver and white ribbon. Isn't that pretty? bring in my ribbon scissors. These scissors I keep strictly for ribbon. They just cut way better. And then I am going to just wrap that around right now and get that part done and we'll fasten that to the card front. Whoops, I guess I'm fastening it to my fingers. And I think I want it about there. I've got glue dots everywhere but where they should be. We will do another one here. There we go. That looks pretty straight. So now we've got that done. I'm going to put this on dimensionals. So in all the corners, and I always like to, when I have ribbon wrapped around, I like to catch that with a dimensional as well. And then we'll throw a few in the middle because we don't want saggy cards. There we go. Oh, and just before I peel that off, I should fold my card base. I thought it was all ready. I was so ready for the other part that some of these things weren't quite as handy. There we go. So we'll peel these off. See how quickly this is coming together? There we go. And again, oh, where did I put that? There we go. Just so I can see a little bit better. Diana taught me this trick and I have been so thankful. There we go. I'm just going to rest it because it is hard to see when I'm looking through a camera. What do you think? It's pretty straight? Yeah, I think it's straight. Oh, Marianne, yes, this is your kind of card. You love monochromatic. And this is what this card is, that's for sure. Now I'm going to put that to the side. I need this so I can see better. And I'm going to bring in a card, that our card, stamp set, that is one of the free celebration stamp sets. 
So for celebration, every $60 you spend, you get to choose either a 60, a level one, which is for $60, or if you spend 120, then you can get a level two. Um, but this has absolutely gorgeous font and words both. I just love them. I'm going to go with the thank you here. There's, we're in this together, wishing I could heal your heart, sorry for your loss. And I can't promise to always fix your problems, but I can promise you won't ever face them alone. That, oh, I just love that. Oh, I already have it mounted. I'm way ahead of the game. There we go. So here it is. You can tell that I got ready earlier today. Actually, I got ready last night and I had forgotten what I've done. So I am going to do silver embossing on this. So I'm using my embossing buddy. If you don't have an embossing buddy, even rubbing a Kleenex or um, dryer sheet, unscented dryer sheet works well. So I'm inking this up with Versamark ink. And if I was doing this in a class, we would all stamp it first and then cut it out. But because I'm doing this here, I wanted to be able to make this a little bit faster. So I cut it out first, which is always living dangerously but it did work so we'll put that to the side and bring in the embossing powder and I like to keep mine it comes in a little tiny container I like to just put it in something like this so that I can have more room now do you see that I've got a little bit extra there um, you can take that off either by using a little paintbrush or you can use the sticky end of your take your pick tool but that just means I caught an edge so I caught the edge of the stamp and I can just take it off like that you do want to get it off because if you emboss it it's going to be there forever and then you'll just have an opportunity to embellish right those of us who've done that before know what that's all about. So now I'm going to bring the heat tool in so it's going to be noisy folks. Sorry about that. The heat tool has two settings. I've put it on the, the highest, the most powerful and I'm giving it a minute to heat up. It's just going to work that much better. And then we will watch the magic again. There it goes, it's starting to turn. Getting all shiny. What this is doing is melting that powder. And I think we've got that. So now we're gonna bring our card back in and I'm just going to make my plan. I like to make my plan before I stick things down. This is going to go about here and I, on this card here, instead of tying a bow, I just did a swoosh of ribbon behind it. I think I'll do the same thing this time. So I'm going to bring in my ribbon scissors and my ribbon. And I'm going to cheat a little bit and just measure this one and try to make it about the same. You just play around till you, th you think it looks good. And because that's what it's all about, right? Whatever looks good to you. And now bring my take your pick tool in because I want to get um, a glue dot and put it between these two ribbons. So I'm going to put it down here and then take a look and see if I've got it. I want it just to be fanned out slightly. The nice thing about a glue dot, if I didn't like it, I can just lift it up. All right, I think that's going to work. Now I'm going to take another glue dot and put it on the back and I'll put a couple back here just to hold it down like that. Now again I'm just going to rest it until I figure out if that's where I want it to go. Ooh, I think that works. What do you think? I, I think it works just fine so I'll stick that down and then I'm going to put dimensionals on this because it's over the ribbon. It's going to be bouncy anyway. So I, I'm putting my dimensionals. I'm trying to aim. <laughs> we'll see if I did well or not. So that I'm hitting the card more than the ribbon. So 
oh, you know what? I think that could come down a little bit. So I'm just going to gently lift it up and move it down a bit. Let's see. Yeah, I like that better. All right. Take the backing off. Isn't this a fast card? And yet it looks... It looks elegant. So there we go like that. Now you could put rhinestones or whatever, but we have these neat little silver metallic pearls and I really, really like them. So just let me grab them. So they come in silver or gold. So we'll use the silver ones tonight. I've also been known to color them as you know. So that's why we have some that are different colors here. I just take my blends and color them in and uh, going for the magic of three. I always love three. And, and there we go. There we've made our card for tonight. So what do you think? Do you like it? Do you like that stamp set? I see a few of you saying beautiful card. Thank you. Um, and how many are going to try this technique with the two embossing folders? I... I would love to see what you do. So I hope you share because I think there's just so much potential there and you could do so many different things. So this is the one we made right now. And then, oh, I don't know where I put the other one that I made with the dandelions, but you've got the idea. So there's a new technique for you. It's new to me and it's called the double dry embossing technique. And I have, once I heard about it, I did go on YouTube and I found a few there, but um, this, this basically this is what it is. So thank you to Lynn, my downline, for sharing it. And uh, thank you for coming and joining in. Okay, so, oh, are you going to try to hit 165 just for fun? It, you don't have to buy it, but it just for fun. That's a fun thing. And you would want to know what the biggest... Um, the most popular item in celebration is so far. Can you make a guess? You make a guess and I'll tell you tomorrow on Facebook on this page. All right. Have some fun with this. Can't wait to see what you do. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.